2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Head of School of Education, Professor John Fischetti, we were talking about the new Olympic uniform. Can you believe that the Rio Olympics are on this year? Amazing, just a few months out. Oh, just a few. What do you think? Having a look at the picture this morning, you are a very snappy dresser. What do you give it out of 10? Oh, they look seven or eight. You know, have to see how it how it plays out in the hot Rio sun. <laughs> yes, I think the blazers <laughs> would be coming off <laughs> very, very quickly indeed. Uh, a lot of good comments. Give us your thoughts. Swing by and have a look. You know, with, with Olympic uniforms, they either look fantastic or they look tragic. There's never, you know, it's one or the other. They did look it? good on the mannequin, I'm sure. Yeah, it always looks good on the mannequin. That's my theory. Lots happening this morning. We're having a look at what the NAPLAN tests are telling us about our students' progress. And interestingly enough... The gap between students whose parents have low education and those with highly educated parents grows from 10 months in year three and just increases exponentially. Were you shocked at this outcome? You know, this is from the Grattan Institute report, this Australian national think tank that does really good work at analyzing data. And it's almost like finding out you thought your blood pressure was going okay and now it's out of whack and you're going to have to do something now. The gap you speak of is actually an alarm of urgency for a total rethink about what we're doing. Do you think it's a a terrible situation that when I was at school and probably when you were at school, the primary years were just the thing you had to do? You went to primary school and then all of a sudden it started to gear up a little Mm -hmm. bit. Then you got to high school and now we're in serious mode. What do you want to do when you leave school? What career? What path do you want to follow? It's a lot of pressure on kids. And if, if we're looking at year three at this stage... It's kind of scary, isn't it? Well, schools are a reflection of society, Todd. So what we're also seeing is the issues facing Australian economy and society playing out. And year three is a crucial one for a variety of reasons. It's about the time in the curriculum where you go from learning how to read to using reading to learn. So we say learning to read to reading to learn. It's where instead of just everything is fun and play and figuring it out to where now you're reading in science, you're reading in math, you're reading in the history area. So for kids that don't have support systems around them from year three on, you can see why the gaps get growing. Like, for example, are there any books at home? Has your mom completed high school? Is your father uh, sort of taking the time to do the academic as well as the social thing? So you start to see the gaps widen almost insurmountably between year three and nine in this report. So that's the point. If that's at year three... What kind of gap is there by the time the student gets to year nine in high school? Well, there can be as much as a five-year gap by year nine. So you're already talking about kids that won't progress much past year five competing with year nine. And in the innovation age, this knowledge economy we're in, you can see that those kids are almost not going to be able to succeed in the global economy that we currently have in front of us. That's how shocking it is. The good news is if we identify it in years two and three, There are remediations that can take place that can close those gaps, but those require a different approach than we might be taking currently. Well, that's something we were talking about. Is school still enough? We're talking about the possibility of getting a tutor who may help with mathematics or English, whatever you're looking at. One of the other things that I found interesting in the report was bright kids in disadvantaged schools show the biggest losses. This is scary as well, isn't it? This is clearly on the backs of whether teachers are qualified or not to what we call differentiate, to make that wide a change in their instruction in one lesson between kids who are three or four years ahead of their peers. That's quite a lot to do if there's one teacher in one classroom. What other countries have done have used paraprofessionals, volunteers, or tutors during the school day to really help bridge that gap so they can pull kids aside and catch them up or not hold back those kids that are actually advanced for going about as fast as the slowest kid in their class. And that's that's the hard point, isn't it? If you've got a teacher that's got children at X level, you may have 90% of the class at this level, and you've got 10% that are at that level, a higher level, who do you teach to? And I suppose it comes down to the the largest amount, doesn't it? Yes, you end up teaching to the middle, and that ends up meaning the fringes get lost. Parents who are also struggling economically tend to have a malaise in their family, and we're facing that more and more in society. Generational unemployment, even I'm seeing the advertisements now to say to maybe even drop your coverage for dental and eye on the supplemental plans because of increasing cost. Think of if you haven't been to the dentist or the eye doctor, and now you're eight and nine years old. Your permanent teeth have come in behind your baby teeth, and you've really not been to the dentist because the extra supplemental care isn't provided once the Medicare goes away for that. 
all of a sudden some of the medical issues start to face themselves and are inhibiting. John, you're talking about thinking back to the 20s and the 30s yep. and even my father had a, an eye issue. He had a sight difficulty and they didn't know that he wasn't tested. They thought he was slow, but it, simple as needing glasses. 25% of the reading gap can be just in needing and then wearing the right glasses or getting them changed because you know how you change as a child as you get bigger. And with people not necessarily opting for the additional coverages to their plans because of cost, unemployment, or just not really realizing, some of the gaps can be closed by looking at the whole family and whole community aspect of what's going on. It's not just one thing, is it? Teacher quality is number one, however, because in spite of all that, in schools that have great teachers, those teachers are closing gaps. Some of it's the model of schooling still is what we'll call sit and get in an American sort of slang, where you sit yeah. and listen, we're gonna to have to get kids actively involved. We also have to work on our TAFE and adult education because a family who has a mother back in school, a father who's employed and who is sort of dealing with things by moving forward, all tend to create hope inside of children, particularly young men and anger that can come in young men as they hit their later years toward early teens. They tend to buy into school when there seems to be hope in their family. Well, it's a double whammy for teenager boys, isn't it? Because generally around the age of 12 or 13, they're, they're irrational anyway. They're, they're, yep. they're puberty, they're, they're teenagers. The double whammy of maybe not feeling confident at school, maybe feeling left behind and thinking, well, where am I going? It's a, it's a real pivotal point, isn't it? And if our listeners said, well, you know, that's always been the case, Todd. What's different today is there's nothing to do if you're a marginal student. Where are you going to go? The jobs that haven't yeah. been automated will be, and the, the education that you need is at another level. Technical, second language, highly skilled in the listening, re reading, writing, listening, speaking component of things. So you actually have to have a great education. So if you're marginal, the jobs that are out there are gone or they will be gone. Okay, NAPLAN is showing more and more problems, but also some benefits as well. Thanks for yep. your time. Thanks, Todd. Talk to you in a couple of weeks' time. Professor John Fischetti.